I've cleared a spot in the back of the yard and this year I'm going to try my hand at growing pumpkins. There's quite a bit of literature out on the net about uh, how to grow pumpkins and they say to make uh, hills of about three feet wide and to make uh, a moat around them to hold water. So I've got enough room here for two hills. Pumpkins are also said to love the sun and this is facing north so we get the sun from the south and it's about 4.30 in the afternoon right now so this pumpkin patch is going to get the sun from the morning until quite late in the afternoon when the shadows will start to fall over to the left side there. There are the pumpkin seeds. There were 20 in a package and they say that in each hill you should plant between 6 to 8 to 10 seeds. So I'm going to plant 10 in each of my two hills. I'm going to place them all about 6 inches apart. I'm going to cover the seeds with a couple of inches of soil. I'm going to do the first waterings from a sprinkler can is not to wash the delicate seeds away. Once they've firmly taken root and they're sprouting vines, then I can switch to the garden hose or the lawn sprinkler. And now it's time for identification, which is mandatory. These are the jack-o'-lantern style of pumpkins, rather than the giant kind, because I'm hoping to be able to Give them to friends and neighbors to make jack-o'-lanterns with at Halloween. So we'll keep a watch on this and hopefully uh, we'll get some good results out of it. Well, the pumpkins are starting. It's been about three weeks since the seeds were sown. And here are the leaves coming up. And there's been a lot of rain, so that's good to get these guys going. So on this hill, I only have about four or five uh, plants starting from the seeds that I sowed. Uh, the biggest one is at the uh, bottom left. And now that I know what pumpkin leaves look like, I can easily tell when um, other weeds are sprouting up, such as these ones here at the side, and I can yank them out without worrying about disturbing my precious pumps. There are more pumpkin plants blooming out of this hill. For some reason the seeds here took better. So same thing. And the rain that we've been having has also really helped the weeds to grow. So I'm going to have to get busy here with my trusty pitchfork and dig all this ground up and rake the weeds out. So, there we go. The pumpkin plants have taken root. They're starting to sprout. And the next thing to wait for, I guess, is for the flowers to form. And it certainly looks like it's going to rain again. A lot of rain over these past few days. A lot of storms. Well, the rain will only help these plants uh, get along better. So I hope that is to be interspersed with lots of sun as well. We got pumpkins growing and how we do. 
So from this hill, almost all the 10 seeds that I planted have, in fact, uh, germinated. Whereas over on the other hill, only about half of the seeds that I planted of the 10 uh, have sprouted. I can't get over the size of the uh, pumpkin leaves, so the size of elephant's ears. And the vines are starting to spread out. Now they're going beyond the confines of the uh, pumpkin patch here and spreading out onto the actual lawn. There's a bigger one here, and along it comes. And it's probably going to spread all the way down the yard to the house here. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. They've begun to flower and my Uncle Sam said that the male flowers grow near the roots and that's what appears to be happening here. Well now, I know what they mean by the term pumpkin patch. Look how these things grow. Good golly. And it's just amazing to think that these started out from seeds only a short couple of months ago. Now I believe that the male flowers on the pumpkin are these longer stemmed ones that come from the vine. And here's a flower that um, has yet to open. The female flower grows closer to the vine on a shorter stem and it's got a bulb underneath it. And if the flower is pollinated then that bulb will grow and become the pumpkin. The flower will wither and the pumpkin begins to grow quite quickly. And we can see here that this is a flower that looks like it has become pollinated because there's a bulb beginning to grow. The flower will wither and die and that will become the pumpkin. Here's another one that's coming along and the uh, flower is beginning to wither and the bulb getting uh, bigger beneath it. And here we have a pumpkin and over very close to it, there's another pumpkin. You can see the stem on it that will become the, fa the familiar stem that you see on a jack-o'-lantern. These are jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. This one's the first that I saw growing and it's the biggest so far. And we see that its color right now is that of a, looks more like a watermelon, but I'm pretty sure as this begins to uh, ripen, Oh, in about a month from now it will become a familiar great bright orange. It's the second pumpkin that I found growing on my vines and it's becoming a nice size too. Uh, and that's going to be a good old jack-o'-lantern. So I counted a good dozen pumpkins growing right now and no doubt there will be more as the flowers start to bloom and the bees do their stuff. My Uncle Sam was telling me that he was going to uh, explain to me how to do my own pollination with a, with a paintbrush if necessary, but uh, the bees are just going so crazy over these flowers that I don't think it will be necessary. And these vines are going to be growing. They're about a third of the way down the yard now and they are probably going to grow the entire extent of the backyard right down near the house. Some of the vines have tried to grow through the cracks in the fence uh, neighboring on the neighboring property, but I've uh, pulled them away, trained them around and um, I'll try to encourage them to grow back this way onto our property.